change. Okay, we're live. We are live right now. So, um, hello, hello, Richard, and hello, Rebecca. Hi, good to be with you, Jasmina. Uh, good to be here with you as well. And uh, thank you for joining us for uh, today's show and uh, with uh, Rebecca as well. So, um, unfortunately, Rebecca is not able to um, come on screen with us due to some te technical difficulties, but I'm just hoping that she will be able to join us, uh, you know, in, in the midst of our interview later on. So we're just waiting for her to um, join, uh, join us in today. So for today's show, it's going to be about um, um, talking about your, your new book, uh, which is uh, also uh, on uh, how interesting your um, journey is as a filmmaker and a book to film adaptation of um, the Canon Len, right? So we're going to talk about that and uh, some of the uh, very interesting aspects of your book and also the controversial that, you know, that actually uh, came about with the book as well. So I think it's going to be very interesting to talk to you how you um, um, how how you journeyed, you know, with the book from the idea of the book and also how you actually made it into a movie, right? So um, Richard, before that, um, <clears throat> could you actually explain about yourself? Tell about your uh, self to uh, our audience and people who are watching right now a little bit about yourself. Uh, yes, well, I um, I started as a young adult as a minister, and I was very involved in the world of faith, healing, and evangelism. And this story, um, Canaan Land, which is now out as a novel and a film coming out starring Rebecca Holden and myself, mm -hmm. is about a con man preacher, Brother Billy, who I play. And he mm -hmm. falls in love with a um, sincere Christian who Sarah Sunday is the character, Sister Sarah Sunday, played by Rebecca Holden. Mm -hmm. And um, she helps me to know that this con game isn't a con game anymore. And so my background in this world, I did it very sincerely. I prayed for the sick and I was trying to be as honest ab about uh, the results or lack thereof. But I mm -hmm. found some real frauds out there doing fake miracles and uh, exploiting people, manipulating people for money, fleecing the flock. And so um, I had the idea for this story uh, we did it as a play back in 98, 1998, I wrote it as a play. So this has been a project in my heart uh, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then a film, and the film is almost done. Now the novel's out on Amazon, Kane and Land, um, in audio book, uh, paperback and Kindle, and the soundtrack will be coming out soon with music mm -hmm. by Rebecca and myself and my son and others. Um, and uh, we're really glad the film's finally out there. It's getting a lot of controversy, a lot of people talking about it already. Uh-huh, yes. So um, coming to the um, uh, the gist of your book or uh, the gist of the film, right? Um, and also how controversial it can get. So uh, would you actually want to like, you know, explain a little bit about that and um, why does it like spark the controversy? Well, the controversy comes from the fact that I'm debunking and I'm showing the trade secrets of some of these famous faith healers. You know, like mm -hmm. Benny Hinn's a big one, and he gets a bunch of uh, uh, wheelchairs, about 30 new wheelchairs, and goes to uh, uh, stadiums. And then he'll mm -hmm. find an elderly person that's uh, walking, but maybe walking slow. And he'll put it, hey, say, hey, you want to sit in the front row? As usher say, we'll give you a VIP seat. Just sit in the wheelchair, and we'll push you. And then Benny Hinn will come to that person and pull them out of the wheelchair, and everyone thinks they walked for the first time. Uh, there's a church in Northern California that uh, has a huge following, but they did a, a trick with fake gold glitter and they put it in the HVAC system of their church. And mm -hmm. then they uh, claimed this was gold from the golden streets of heaven. And they have a huge following. They charge like $4,000 to learn how to do miracles at their school. But it all, mm -hmm. a big catalyst to their fame was this fake uh, miracle with fake gold dust and feathers that they claimed were angel feathers. And a lot of people are, it's controversial because people say I shouldn't criticize them. These are churches and they do some good the church in Northern California has popular uh, music and uh, pastors. So people say, hey, they're doing all this good. You know, you shouldn't hurt the hurt the body of Christ. But my belief is that the fake miracles uh, mm -hmm. it, it tracks from God's magnificence and hurts the body of Christ. Like like if you had a sore on your thumb or a, 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 a speck in your eye or, so, you know, a, a problem in religion, I think, uh, uh, causes a lot of problems. So I'm, I don't hate these people that I'm exposing in the story. 
I uh, even in my story, Brother Billy, the con man that I play, does repent and does give the money back to the people he ripped off. So I'm going to be challenging people, these type of preachers, to give the money back that they've taken under false pretenses. Because when they tell people, give me a thousand dollars and you'll get healed, that is so clearly manipulative. I believe they should give the money back that they take for, for such thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, in terms of um, the writing process and um, converting our, uh, you know, the book to film adaptation, right? So um, would you like um, uh, tell us a little bit about um, when did the idea to write a book sparked and, you know, um, and then uh, how, how do you like decide to make it into a movie? Um, well, this book um, uh, started as a play, as I said, and then a screenplay. And mm -hmm. um, th in this case, I have written a coming of age novel, Stickman, that's being made into a film uh, in the next couple of years that the novel was first and that was the whole basis of everything. In this case, um, the filmmaking uh, was in process and, and pretty far along as I was finishing the novel. Mm -hmm. So um, Rebecca, who uh, who has had some uh, technical issues getting on video here, is on the speakerphone, so maybe she can speak to that in a moment. But Rebecca really oh. and the other actors really brought this uh, story to life as we were making the film. So uh, these great actors brought the characters to life. So as I was doing this novel, this would be called, I guess, technically a novelization because... Mm -hmm taking the film that we were making, and that was also shaping the way I wrote the novel. Now, the novel has a lot more information in terms of the background of the characters and their interior monologue and the thoughts in their head, and we get a lot more backstory on the main characters, Brother Billy and Sister Sarah. But Rebecca, and I know we may, this is a little tricky audio. I got basically a cell phone here and Rebecca's on my cell phone on speaker since we had some problems with the visual. But Rebecca, I have to give you a lot of credit. You brought Sister Sarah Sunday to life and helped as I wrote the novel. I, you know, of course I had you in my mind, you know. Can you hear me, hear me, Rebecca? Hello, Richard, and hello, Justina. And I'm, I apologize for the technical difficulties today, but at least we can talk by, by voice and uh, yes. this, this wonderful film. And, and it was a pleasure and a privilege uh, to be a part of this cast. And I thank you for Richard for writing this screenplay and writing this wonderful role for me to embody. And I just cherish all of the conversations that we had about mm -hmm. our faith and about characters that we knew in, in this world. Um, and that helped us to bring these characters to life. Uh, and as we went through the scenes, I think as actors, when you begin to become that character, uh, they sort of flesh out. And then Richard and I would, would discuss it, and I think he brought a lot of our discussions into the novelization of the book. So normally you have a, a book fully written, and then uh, you sell the rights to the book to uh, a production company, and, and they make a film of the book. But this sort of works in, re in reverse, and I think it's all the better for it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So, uh, Rebecca, uh, would you like to explain uh, a little bit about your experience working with uh, Richard and also especially um, considering the fact that this is going to be uh, ruffling, uh, you know, controversy in uh, among the society or, you know, you might be able to... Um, uh, you might be actually hurting the feelings of some people of the society, you know, right? So with the with the theme of uh, the uh, book as well as the movie, right? So how do you deal with that and um, uh, uh, talk to us a little bit about that? Could you hear that question okay, Rebecca? No, it's, it's breaking up so much. Can well, you, she... Um, I can repeat, she based, she was, Jasmina is asking you about the controversy that the novel and the film has hurt some feelings because we've confronted some of the fake stuff going on. And uh, what is your feelings about the potential of this to hurt feelings and ruffle feathers? I don't think that we worry about that. We worry about truth. Mm -hmm. and, and I think many people have been hurt over the years by people who are conmen, liars, mm -hmm. or or manipulative, and in the process, people turn away from God, because when they see the fraud and the deception, um, they tend to, to, to paint all ministers and evangelists with a broad brush, 
and mm-hmm. God's God kingdom, God's kingdom in general. And many people have turned away from the church in general because of that. Uh, I think we're all meant to use the brain that God gave us. He is, He manages for us to to use discernment and our and our wisdom and our judgment and discern what is real and what is truth and what is deception. And I, I think um, this film and Richard's novel of it uh, can do a great deal of good for God's kingdom by exposing uh, some of the fraud. Uh, and, and more than anything, uh, I, I hope that it will provoke discussion and thought mm-hmm. and conversation uh, so people can talk about these these concepts and talk about this this topic and and bring bring to light some of the things that have turned people away and uh, you know we're we're living in perilous times and and when we're going through difficulties and challenges as this country has experienced in recent days with the pandemic and and the riots and the looting and and division um, people start to confront the big questions they start to ponder on the things that matter. Uh, their mm-hmm. loved ones. When people lose loved ones, um, they they face their own mortality, and so these big picture questions come come to light, and and they start confronting. You know, do my do my choices that I make in life matter? Um, are mm-hmm. there eternal consequences to the decisions that I make? And and films like that can bring these questions to light and have us actually talking about the important things and and bringing people back to the church so yes we want to entertain of course movies do that you know and they they uplift and they inspire but we also want to educate and and provoke thought and discussion and that in itself unites us yes yes very well said i hope you all could hear that okay i don't know if it matters Casfina, but on my screen my image is frozen but We'll just keep rolling with it. I yes, guess. I mean, uh, I think yes, just me. some technical uh, issues that we are having over here, but uh, the voice is clear, your voice is clear, and yes. uh, Rebecca's voice is clear as well. So, okay. uh, yeah, I think we'll just keep rolling. Okay. And uh, I think we have a question over here as well. Um, it's okay. from uh, Al Doshna. Um, is there someone in the Bible that could be compared to Brother Billy and our Sister Sarah or both? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I could answer that and then ask Rebecca. Um, a character uh-huh. that would represent Brother Billy. You know, yes, there is. In the book of Acts in the Bible, there was a man um, who tried to buy and sell healings and the gifts of the Spirit. He was his name Simon the Magician. And he uh-huh. came to the apostles who worked with Jesus and he wanted to buy the ability to heal people and then sell it and merchandise it. And uh, the apostles rebuked him and said it was a horrific sin to try to merchandise healings and spiritual gifts. Yet the church, the one of the main churches in Northern California who did this fake miracle with the fake gold glitter, they charged these gullible young people like 4,000 a year, three, 4,000 a year, to come there and, the, and they'll say, we'll teach you how to do all these miracles. Now, when COVID hit, they were the first church to close down their prayers for the sick and their prayer services. So if they really had all this ability to heal everybody, that was an mm-hmm. obvious uh, giveaway that it was a fraud because they were scared, uh, uh, like scared silly. The minute COVID hit, they closed down all their services and their prayers for the sick. So in the Bible, yes, there were people who tried to buy and sell uh, the gifts of the spirit and they were rebuked for that. As far as Sister Sarah, she's a very powerful woman of God. Um, I think uh, in the Bible, there are some powerful women like Deborah in the book of Judges. Um, and there was some uh, women that preached in the Bible like Aquila. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard the question, Rebecca. She, uh, Somebody actually is sending in a question live and they asked if there's any Bible characters or stories that can compare to... Um, uh, the question is, is there someone in the Bible that could be compared to Brother Billy and or Sister Sarah or both? Do you have any thoughts on that one, Rebecca? Oh, well, I, I misunderstood um, the question, and I wanted to tell you what came to mind um, of the story of, of the manipulation um, in, 
not not too distant times. Um, many of your viewers may know a country singer by the name of Ronnie Millsap. Yes. A marvelous keyboard player, a marvelous singer, and he's blind. He was, he was born blind from a very, um, I think, maybe not as an, uh, born blind, but as an infant, he was blinded. And they... His parents would take him to the faith healings, the ones that you talked about earlier. And on the way home in the car, when he didn't get his sight, um, they told him it was all his fault. Well, you can imagine the, the damage that that does to a little boy, feeling the guilt mm -hmm. that he didn't have enough faith to be healed. And I think that that did a lot of damage to Ronnie and to his faith for many years. Uh, and, and those things just, you know, break my heart. Um, you can imagine what, what that would do. So it, these, these kind of people, like Brother Billy in the Bible, um, or Brother Billy, who is in our film, um, they are out there. And we talked um, earlier today, Richard, you and I talked about Marjo Gortner. Yes. We did the film Marjo and, and exposing... Um, the manipulations, and he was taught from the time he was four years old the tricks of the trade, so to speak, and how to con people and how to get the most money out of them, and it, it turned many, many, many people away, and, and they threw the baby out with the bathwater. Yes. They did away with their faith all, all together. Yeah. And so if we open up and, and talk about these things, um, mm -hmm. You know, it brings enlightenment. And, and we, we want to bring that people to, to a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, Josephina, can you hear Rebecca okay? Can yes. Okay. Pia. Good. Yeah, that was Pia, yeah, Rebecca. And, 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 and I think um, she explained that very well to uh, Doshna's uh, question earlier. And, uh, yeah. So, also, um, you know, something that's also related to uh, this, right? I'm, since you are um, uh, writing about um, how the um, misconducts uh, that's happening in the um, community and also especially among the uh, the church community, right? So, uh, is this book a work of fiction or is this a, a book work of um, nonfiction? And um, how much true, you know? Uh, truth that is in the book as well as the movie and how do you go about protecting uh, people's privacy and how do you go about changing the um, some of the aspects of the actual happenings you know so that you don't really um, reveal names or things like that well that's a good question um, uh, and if, if you didn't quite hear that Rebecca she's asking me how much is fiction or how much is uh, real um, I believe when even when you write a fictional novel like Canaan Land, mm -hmm. that you want to base it in truth. All good writing is based in truth. So mm -hmm. all the characters in Canaan Land are composite characters. And by that, I mean they're based, well, for legal reasons, we say all characters are fictional. No resem Any resemblance to any living persons is strictly coincidental. But in, in the honest writing process, you have to if you're going to be a good writer, you have to take things that are really happening and are real. The gold dust stunt. This is something that really happened that Billy does in the film. I had a pastor come to me and people come to me and say, I did this. This is how I ripped off the people. This is how I, I put it in the HVAC system and I tricked them. So these mm -hmm. are things that really happen. Um, the many of the things in the book, um, almost all the incidents in the book, um, Yes, I use my imagination, but these are things that really happen. Um, uh, Sister Sarah is a, a great woman of God, but she's very lonely. And, uh -huh. uh, and Billy fakes faith to get to her. That's something that really happened. I have a friend of mine who I won't mention her name because she's a very famous actress. And uh -huh. we, had, we had discussions about faith, and she has recently become a woman of faith. And she told uh -huh. me that the minute word got out that she had become a woman of faith, all these men that had crushes on her that saw her in various movies and TV shows started telling her, oh, yes, I'm, a, I'm, uh, I'm into the Bible and I'm into church. And she said they're faking faith because they want to get me into bed, basically. And they're mm -hmm. faking faith. They're not really true. So that gave me the idea about how Billy um, 
you know, play acts and tries to get a hold of Sarah's heart and tries to get a hold of her ministry and work his way in there. Mm -hmm. So um, when you write something, there's a part of you in every character that's true. Like, for instance, when I was a young preacher, I did things in taking offerings that I've repented of, and it was the way I was trained to do it, in which uh -huh. you manipulate people for money using guilt and fear. And I was on these telethons for Christian TV, and I was the one that was able to get in a lot of the money because I was trained that you you make the people feel guilty if they don't give 10%, if they don't give uh, this much money, that they are under a curse and they're robbing God and all this sort of thing. Instead of teaching them the truth that they have uh, giving is a good thing, but you should never give, you don't have to give to anybody and you should never give out of manipulation that you should give cheerfully and from your heart. But I did these things as a young man because I was trained by older preachers to do it this way. So, um, in Sister Sarah, I mean, I relate to her, and there's a part of me that is really like her, and in, in that I've been a very sincere and fervent preacher as well. So almost all these things in this book are based on 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 real things that I've observed. And, and uh, now, no, none of these characters is is exactly somebody I know. There's probably 20 preachers that I've known that I've put into Billy, and there's probably 20 women that I've put into Sarah. So mm -hmm. it's uh, as a writer, I think if you do a composite. And you take mm -hmm. traits that uh, among people you know, you can blend them into a character, and it, it gives that character a lot of levels and layers. Mm -hmm. Right. And yes, like yourself or, or an actress, in my own case, um, we may not have experienced um, a specific event, but we've all experienced pain. We've all mm -hmm. experienced heartbreak. We've all experienced stress. We've all experienced hard times, and we bring those emotions and those feelings uh, in into uh, the, the film with us, and we act from our own personal experiences, just like you write from personal experience. Mm. Those those universal feelings they're they're just that they're they're universal. Yes. Yes. And, and uh, Rebecca, I, I did one of the memorial dedications is to a friend of Rebecca's. Who this uh, particular woman has passed away, but um, her name was Sylvia Fleener Smith. And she was a very courageous woman in confronting con mm -hmm. man and some of these tip types of things. So Rebecca and I have both known people also that were friends of ours that have went uh -huh. through similar to this. Yes. Right. So, um, Richard... Disillusionment yes. that comes along with it is what is heartbreaking because many people hold these TV preachers up as you know role models and they they admire them and respect them and when their flawed character comes to light uh, it's very disillusioning but we must hold tight to our faith and mm -hmm. know that they do not represent God if they're not behaving in a godly manner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So um, I was just wondering, uh, Richard, um, what what makes you um, actually choose Rebecca, and um, um, uh, how did you actually get to know her, and you know, uh, what makes you think that she would be the perfect fit for the Sister Sarah character, and um, also, as a matter of fact, for uh, the other characters in the movie, like how do you, um, you know pick the right actor or actresses to actually represent the characters in the book? Oh, that's a good question, Jasmina. Um, Rebecca uh, is, I was so thrilled, I consider it a blessing and a divine destiny mm -hmm. that uh, Rebecca came into my life to play this part. And I believe mm -hmm. that she will be remembered for this generation mm -hmm. and generations to come. It's one of the best things she's ever done because she just embodies this part. Um, Rebecca is all a grounded woman of faith, as, as her answers can uh, reveal, and she's a beautiful woman. Um, uh, so, you know, her, her physical beauty, you can believe that, you know, Billy would be attracted to her. She had to have that combination of the physical, but also the spiritual side, that mixture mm -hmm. of spirituality and sensuality. It was a coveted role, even though we worked mm -hmm. on a modest budget, and it wasn't like a, a part that people were getting a lot of money from because of the, I think the quality of the part. 
uh, in all that it embodied. We did have a, a, a number of um, very famous women won this part. In fact, there's been articles about the casting mm -hmm. call from there and how many different people won it. But for me, as a director, I needed someone that not only could do the part, but mm -hmm. also was a grounded, spiritual, sound person. And so Rebecca is not only a great singer and, and sings all these songs and, and did a great performance, but it also was a great relief to me that she's a very grounded, stable person. And, uh, you know, her and Joel, her husband, Joel Diamond, is one of the greatest uh, record producers ever. And he's a great guy. They are, are a, a nice married couple. And this was all a relief to me, all these personal aspects, because um, there's a lot of actresses out there that um, they ha might have components that to do this part and wanted to do this part, uh, quite frankly. But um, uh, there, you know, you need someone that's going to keep the drama on the page and on the stage and not behind the scenes in their in the personal life. And Rebecca is a person that doesn't bring any drama. And when you're mm -hmm. making a film on a on a on a shoestring budget, you're you're shooting uh, a lot of times over a year or two, you know, on mm -hmm. weekends and things like that. And you need someone that can roll with the punches of shooting guerrilla style for a couple years. You need someone that is not not only talented enough to do it, but not a prima donna. So, as I got mm -hmm. to know her and Joel, these are both very solid, grounded people that are very easy to get along with. I mean, even today we have some technical problems, but we're rolling with it. And that's the kind of thing that making a gorilla film is just like this interview. You occasionally mm -hmm. have things go awry in one way or yes. another. But you've got to just keep moving forward and get her done. <laughs> you know, the show must go on. And, and that's one the of the reasons. The show must go on, that's right. No, no, no room for diva right? Yeah, Rebecca is not a diva at all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. In this business, and it, it's, we get the job done. And and I have to give kudos to to Richard for not only his own professionalism, um, uh -huh. and his uh, sincere uh, sincere efforts to, to get this film made, and his persistence in pursuing it over the years to reach its fruition. But also the uh -huh. team put together. I mean, it was a skeleton crew, but these guys are wonderful, and you know. Richard was heading the team, and it was a, a joy every day that we worked. Mm hmm Okay. Right. Yeah. So I also believe that, you know, this uh, actually happens because um, you, as well as the other co-stars, um, have the similar uh, opinion about the 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 book as well as what you think about what's going on um, in the church community. So. Um, uh, do you think that you know you as well as the the, the other um, actress uh, in in the movie? You are uh, all of you are actually having the same um, uh, uh, trail of thoughts, like opinions about um, uh, what's happening in the church. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, um, I try to cast actors uh, based on the fact that they can do the part the best they can. And so I don't require them to think like me or believe like me. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, if someone is better for the part um, mm -hmm. and they're um, of not of the same faith or belief or perspective, I tend to go with the best person. So it was a, it was a blessing that Rebecca also has the same feeling and faith. But as mm -hmm. far as the uh, the larger cast, um, I'm sure it would represent many different beliefs and even lack of belief. Uh, some people in the cast would say they're atheists or agnostic. Some would say they're Christian. Some would say they're uh, different religions. But um, I try to get the best person, and I, I never try to force my views on anybody. There's people that um, I became very close with making the film that are in the cast and crew that have told me they don't believe in, in God or religion at all. And... Um, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the fact that we're all honest about what we think. I think mm -hmm. it's important to get the best, um, make the most honest film you can make. And mm -hmm. um, there were people in, in this process that said, you know, I want to be in this film, put me in it because I'm a Christian or I'm a, have the same faith as you. And if they want to help, that's great. But I would never give somebody a part just because they had a certain belief. Um, you know, um, I made a film a few years ago uh, called Sister Amy about Amy Simple McPherson. And mm -hmm. uh, there were many people from her church saying, oh, you need to have an actress from, from, from her church. She was a famous faith healing uh, woman. And uh -huh. the best actress in, in all the women that auditioned 
uh, was uh, Mimi Michaels, who was a Jewish woman, and she had never, ever been in a, a Christian church. Uh, and, mm -hmm. But she went to uh, some Christian services as part of her research, but she did a wonderful job in the part. And in fact, her parents thanked me. They said, we learned about Jesus and about what he was all about through this process. Um, so, you know, I would never, um, I know there are some Christian filmmakers that think you should have all Christians working with you. I don't believe that. I believe you want to get the best people you can get. But uh, the uh -huh. fact that Rebecca and I had such similar views, that was uh, certainly an added blessing. Uh-huh. Right. I, I think uh, it's more about um, how you open your mind and uh, think in, in a manner that um, you will be able to accept people who are not from the um, same um, faith as yours and who do yes. not think like you. But, you know, you feel that the characters or the person would be able to do justice to the characters. And I think that's how you go about picking your, um, you know, your uh, selecting your uh, uh, actor and also actresses. And uh, uh, I must also uh, say that um, it's an excellent way to um, uh, actually uh, group the talents uh, in order to produce an effective movie, right? So um, I believe because of this, you would have gone through a lot of difficulties and um, uh, how do you react to people who are trying to um, stop you from uh, producing or releasing the movie. Um, yes. Um, she's asking Rebecca about people that are against the movie or wanting to stop it. Um, I feel that it validates me as an artist that my work sometimes gets people against it. Now, when mm -hmm. I first started out making films or writing, um, I had, uh, I was very sensitive to being hurt and rejected. So, uh, when I would put something out, there'd be people that would give it five star reviews and love it. And there'd be other people that would, would tear it to shreds. And when I would read the bad reviews, I have to admit that I got quite hurt by it. And I, mm -hmm. I identified too closely with what I wor my work. And I took mm -hmm. it as a personal rejection. And I was uh, quite uh, despondent that I'm a failure and that sort of a thing. But one thing I've learned is no matter what you make, there's going to be some people that like it and some people that don't like it. And a lot of uh, Christian filmmakers particularly, I think they make um, work that is so um, tame and it just... Um, it's afraid to uh, challenge things. And I think an artist has to be willing to take some heat and really do something that's really, really strong and really, really does ruffle feathers. I mean, there's a saying that some people have, what would Jesus do? Well, one of the things Jesus did was he overturned the tables in the temple when people were ripping off the people. They came for the Passover. And so they, stole, they, they charged way too much money for the people at the Passover for the animals they needed. Then when they exchanged the money and the currency, they ripped them off on the money changers. And Jesus uh, got out a whip in the temple at Passover and said, you know, you've turned this into a den of thieves trying to merchandise religion. So the fact that people are against it, I take that as a, a badge of honor that I'm doing the right thing. I'd like to see them change. I'd like to see them do what Brother Billy does in the story. And this is a bit of a spoiler. But Brother Billy... Sarah calls a day of repentance and he does repent. He does change. And I'd like to see them change. I'd like to see, um, there are some well-known preachers that have told me they're thinking of coming out and confessing and, and doing what Billy does and admitting what they did with the fake miracles. So I can't say too much more about that because they've asked me to keep that in confidence, but uh -huh. I, I, um, there are people that have threatened me over my work and there are people that have gotten very upset about it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I take that. I take that again as uh, I think a true artist will sometimes upset people, and I hope by God's grace that I can be always truthful in my work. Rebecca said earlier that truth is is the most important thing to buy, and Jesus said the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. Timothy has been a lot from a pure heart, and a good conscience, and a good soul. Timothy, 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 and let the cards fall where they may. And sometimes um, it might ruffle feathers, but there are many people out there who need to hear truth. Mm -hmm. And you have to put first and, and your faith in God and, and being true to your mission. And I, I like what, what, what Richard said earlier about um, passing the best people for the, the role and using the best crew members and so on, we're going to, to give our excellence to God. And if this is an instrument 
to bring God's word to people, to bring his message to people, we have to make it the best that it can be. And in the process, just from the discussions uh, on set, um, uh, living your life, if you live your life as a light um, for all those around you to experience, your, your deeds and your actions and your, your presence and your state of being can speak volumes and influence minds. Uh, you don't push it on people. I think too many people that try to push it on others uh, do more harm than good. Because if you, if, you, if you press, if you go where it's not wanted, you've closed the door. And you may never have that open door to their heart again. So it's, it's our duty to be very discerning in, mm -hmm. in how we approach others. And sometimes just by living God's word. Being a light in someone's life is the best thing we can do to live mm -hmm. a life that God would want us to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so we have uh, uh, another question from uh, Doshna again. Um, why would a non-religious person be interested in this book and film, uh, not atheists uh, who, what, who would want to try to use it to discredit religion, but just ordinary non-believers? Oh, thank you for that question, um, Al. He's asking uh, why would non-religious people be interested in the Canaan Land book and film? Um, one reason that I find that uh, a non-religious person is interested in, in my work is the, the honesty of it. I mean, um, a lot of the Christian faith-based films, they tend to make the Christians out to be these perfect people. Mm -hmm. And people that aren't Christians, like they're really horrible people. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Well, there was one film a while back, and some of my friends are, are stars in this film, so hopefully they won't be too upset that I use this example. But there was a film about um, a young guy who's a Christian and he has an atheist professor and mm -hmm. uh, and he's trying to prove God in the classroom. Well, they make this atheist character out to be so bad and so nasty, you know, and uh, I have a lot of uh, friends who are atheists and atheist professors and they're very nice people. They're not all horrible, nasty people. And, and then they have a Muslim character, I believe, in the uh, film. And they have the Muslim character, you know, abusing their kids. And, you know, so anybody that's not a Christian, they make them out to be these horrific people. Right. So um, in, Ca in, in Canaan land, I show that even that some of these preachers and some of these people in the church world are not very nice people. And they're um, they're they're uh, conning people. And I show that every character, be they religious or non-religious in the film, is a human being. We're all human beings, and all of us have sinned, and all of us are flawed, and all of us are fallible. And that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I try to really give that depth. So I think that non-religious people really like the Canaan Land story and film mm -hmm. um, because it tells the truth, you know. And just because you accept Christ in your life, that doesn't mean all your issues are over. You know, uh, we still have to renew our minds and grow in grace and all of that. And um, I try to really show the humanity and the burdens that even the brother Billies have their reasons for what they do. He was abused by a preacher as a young boy. And there's things in his background that he's the reason why he is the way he is. And um, Sarah is a great woman of faith, but she has a, a loneliness and she has her issues. And so I, I hope a non-religious person will see that this is not a preachy film. This is mm -hmm. not a, that this film has artistic merit and uh, it, it has a redemptive message, but it's not like a religious propaganda film like many of the faith-based films that are out there. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Just, 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 just all of us are flawed. That's part of being human. Yes. 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 I, and I, I, I agree that, you know, um, portraying uh, people from a particular faith or religion uh, just because they are not thinking uh, like how you do is something very uh, something very bad because uh, I think you can't just uh, generalize people by saying that all non-Christians are uh, bad or maybe um, all Muslims are bad and you know things like that. So mm -hmm. um, in that in that sense, I mean. Um, um, 
uh, how do you like you know struggle to um make people understand especially your your christian friends or those who are not in the um same page with you to look at things from another perspective i think it's something very difficult to do but i think from your book and also your movie this is what you're trying to explain and how do you like you know try to convince or you you how do you confront people like you know especially when people confront you how do you deal with it uh yes um i um you're i'm um, just venus asking about um how we deal with uh, trying to make people think a bit of a different way well i sure hope that the people that are against the film or at least have said they're upset that i'm critiquing some of the preachers they like please please give it a chance and read the novel Canaan and land it's on amazon or come see the film as it comes out later this year give us a chance don't prejudge it before you see it because i think when you see the film even some of the critics will realize it's done as a labor of love i show love even for brother billy even brother billy gets a chance to be saved you know it's never too late there was a mm -hmm. man who died on the cross beside jesus and he was a thief on the cross and at the very end of his life he said to jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and jesus said today you will be with me in paradise so i want people to know that um if you're against the film and you think that i'm i'm wrong to do it that i shouldn't expose the fakes in the church mm -hmm. as a writer I, uh, come see the film and you'll see that that i don't hate these people i'm not damning these people I'm not making them devils. I'm just saying they're flawed human beings that got caught up in a deception and they can, uh -huh. they can uh, repent and make it right. And um, I, I, I hope the film will make people think. I hope it will take them into a whole different world. Um, there's an actress, an iconic actress named Britt Lind, and she wrote a review recently on Amazon in the book. And she said the novel took her into a whole different world, even though it was set in Los Angeles that the world of brother Billy and sister Sarah, it was a journey into like a whole different world of mm -hmm. colorful characters and dealing with these big questions of is God real and what is God like and what is what is real faith versus false faith and counterfeit versus uh, authentic. And so I hope, I hope we take a people into a world where they question. I want people to think critically. I hope people that see this film, particularly people that have followed these con men will start to think critically and start mm -hmm. to ask for evidence and mm -hmm. not just believe something because a priest or a pastor tells them, but they will use the mind, as Rebecca said earlier, use the mind God gave you. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, Richard, uh, your book is already out on Amazon. I think it was published um, on uh, April, right? Yes. Right. So, um, how is it doing so far and um, um, what kind of reviews you have fetched? So far, and uh, when is the movie? Uh, when can we all expect the movie to be out uh, this year? Well, um, the the uh, book is doing well. It's on uh, a paperback, Kindle, and audio book, mm -hmm. and um, it's already uh, touching people out there on Amazon. And mm -hmm. so, I think that's getting people excited for the film. The film's about ninety percent finished. My um, editing collaborator, who's also named Richard, Richard Krauss. Uh, mm -hmm. We're gonna. We've had a break because of the coronavirus and being able to work together. But we're gonna be starting to work together again this month with masks on, and mm -hmm. uh, finish it up. And right. uh, what it'll be starting to really come out strong later this year. And mm -hmm. uh, distributors are really excited because they don't have too many films to put out there because a lot of films that were in production had to stop because of coronavirus. So mm -hmm. Canaan Land's almost done. So um, we want to show it all over the world in live screenings as well as stream it in internet. And um, I think what we'll have to do due to the limitations with the Corona situation is we'll have to start the in-person screenings at the places where it's allowed. And that might determine the strategy of where it shows uh, first and then second and then third. As places open up, we'll start showing it more. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, I see some of our uh, pictures are now up on the screen of uh, yes. King. Oh, it looks like yes. the website. It looks like movie. Uh, website so you, the you have, you have um, a website dedicated for uh, the movie, and I believe yeah. uh, also. Oh, there's my, there's the, our number one fan, uh, Kelly, holding the book there. You can see her on the screen. <laughs> Hi, um, Kelly. <laughs> right. Yes. 
So I think um, those who are interested to check this book out and as well as your movie um, can browse this website, uh, which is canonlandmovie.com, C-A-N-A-A-N-L-A-N-M-O-V-I-E.com, right? Yeah. So you have the links to Amazon over here. And uh, I think pretty much everything about the book and the movie is going to be, as well as the trailer, I can see a trailer over here. Um, the there, back in yeah. eye. Yes, correct. So I think uh, you have quite a lot of information about your book over here. And uh, I think they can also get in touch with you, like, you know, I guess, um, mm -hmm. to contact um, uh, you and also to learn more about uh, the cruise as well, right? So, um, yeah, so that's that's one of the things that um, uh, people can do over here. But and I was just wondering over here, uh, you mentioned that there's a special Facebook promotion um, like, and you know, people will get 10% off. So maybe you would wanna like explain about that, like so that people who are watching, if they wanna like, you know, make use of, of that offer. Yes, yes. Um, I, I, if you like us on Facebook and um, um, you'll get 10% off the book or the film when it comes out. Yeah, so I think the website canaanlandmovie.com will explain about yes. that. Yes, correct. So it's, it's. I think you can see over here, uh, I am projecting it on uh, screen again. So it's um, special Facebook promotion like us on Facebook and get 10% off the next order. So um, yeah, so I think you have pretty much a lot of things um, up on the website, right? So um, uh, speaking about the uh, uh, a movie that is going to come out later, uh, how do you plan to like, you know, um, officiate or, or release the movie? And uh, uh, what are your marketing strategies uh, as of now? Well, uh, Rebecca and I've talked about uh, showing up in person at some of these in-person events as we'll be able to and performing music from the film. And... Uh -huh. uh, um, we'll be doing uh, screenings um, all over the world. We want to do it in all 50 states here in the U.S. And mm -hmm. as many as possible, be, you know, may, uh, at least some of us from the cast would like to be in person at, at as many of them as we can and to celebrate mm -hmm. because people have been sequestered. So these will be kind of a celebration and uh, moving forward in faith. Um, and then also, of course, it'll be streaming in different places, people that want to watch it, streaming it. Um, I prefer, I know some people watch movies on their phone and I don't condemn you for that, but I prefer as much as possible that people watch it on the biggest screen possible that they have, be it their TV or their laptop or a movie theater. If you have to watch it on a phone, watch it on a phone, it's okay. But uh, mm -hmm. this film has so many iconic locations, the Hollywood sign, Santa Monica mm -hmm. Pier, uh, Venice Boardwalk, um, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, um, the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, it's just a film that I think if you can, the bigger a screen you can watch it on, the better. How about you, mm -hmm. Rebecca? She's asking about us marketing and putting the film out. Well, we're hoping to be able to do actual live screenings, perform music, and, and meet everyone. You know, uh -huh. this is a wonderful opportunity to talk to people in, in person and connect. And I think people are ready for that again. I think Americans have indomitable spirit. And nothing gets us down for long. And we've been uh, locked down for, for, for way too long. And I think there, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for us all to get together and, and discuss the really big issues. And, and hopefully this film will not only entertain, but also will um, bring us together in discussions and conversations. And, um, you know, it's, it's, people have been able to keep on going in spite of uh, being at home and uh, confined computers and phones but there's nothing like a human connection and this is a, a great reason to, to connect again mm -hmm. right yeah exactly um, so my, music has the power to uplift and inspire and to be able to perform live is, is a wonderful way to celebrate uh-huh right so um richard and uh, rebecca i mean due to coronavirus outbreak um how do you uh, anticipate or uh, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, you know people going back to the cinema and what is the probability what do you think about that like you know how how do you think this is going to affect 
the movie industry and also the your film and you know how do you think uh, what, what do you think about that well i just had an email from uh, a, a, a very, an iconic actress named barbara parkins she started in a film uh, in the 60s called valley of the dolls and mm -hmm. and she's a star of a, a big american show called peyton place back in the day and barbara was telling me about the uh, drive-ins and and um uh, also, one of our uh, big uh, fan club uh, and one of our most passionate promoters, Kelly, also told me the same, that the drive-in theaters are starting to have a comeback here because of the corona uh -huh. situation where people can watch movies in the in the drive-in. And I grew up with the drive-ins and love the drive-in theaters. So uh, mm -hmm. that could be a chance for us to perform music live. Um, I think that um, people uh, may be a bit skittish at, at, at public gatherings at first, mm -hmm. but um, as it opens up, um, I'm still determined to do the public screenings. I mean, mm -hmm. um, it may we may have to rely on the streaming uh, uh, situation in places where where it's taking too long to have the public screenings. They may have to just watch Kane and Land in a screaming a streaming type of situation where they stream mm -hmm. it. Um, and I know I know many people consume movies that way now on Netflix and Amazon and YouTube and thing and um, it will certainly be part of the strategy. But um, I don't want to I don't want to let go of the public event as soon as we're able to. I want people to experience this in person because um, this is a movie that raises big questions about what is love and who is God and and how do you know that who you're following is legit and. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it lends itself to uh, Q and A sessions, question and answer sessions, where I want to discuss these issues. You know, mm -hmm. we're in a very polarized time um, in so many ways, politically, spiritually, religiously, and so I'd like to see this film bring up questions, bring up discussion in in public forums as much as we possibly can, and as soon as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, I do yeah. think it's going to change the uh, movie industry in that um, streaming and, and watching things online, it was already going that way, but mm -hmm. it's gonna become more and more that way. But I'll be very, very sad if it diminishes public theaters because mm -hmm. um, I think the experience of going into a darkened theater and seeing the screen light up, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's analogous to how the light of God and the light of truth can come into our hearts and our emotions when we see a really good film. Uh -huh. Yeah, how about I think Re uh, she's asking Rebecca how this will, how Corona and everything's going to affect the movie industry and public screenings. Well, it, it has shut down everything. Production has been completely at a standstill. Uh, mm -hmm. I have one film, a, produ a producer who uh, had a SAG waiver for just one series that was being shot about love during the quarantine. But um, other than that, I think he, his uh, production was the only game in town. Everything has been completely shut down. So there is sort of a void of, of product. And mm -hmm. uh, I think people are going to be really um, anticipating this film. I give my, my kudos and my hats off to Richard for the pr promotion that he has been doing, even in the process of the post-production time. And uh, hopefully there will be a lot of people looking, looking for it. And sometimes controversy is good. It's a vote discru discussion. And... And talk and conversation, and uh, we look forward to, to meeting everyone, uh, whether the pro or con, <laughs> out there, and and having some wonderful, wonderful discussions and and conversations and uh, debates. Right. Okay. So um, I think uh, uh, we are drawing to the end of the um, uh, live show for today, and uh, I would actually would like to ask uh, the two of you if you have anything to, any messages that you want would want to actually tell the uh, people who are watching this live video right now, uh, what do you want to like tell people out there and potentially the uh, audience um, out there and why should they watch this movie and you know, what are the messages that you have for them? Oh, Rebecca, she's asking for a closing message from both of us. I'll let you go first and then I'll go. Well, I think the message that God wants us to remember throughout his word is that we're to have a pure heart and a sincere faith. And that's what this film is about. Um, mm -hmm. and so 
not about hypocrisy. It's not about money or things. Um, God says that, that his people love people and use things. Uh, worldly people love things and use people. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we know that death is inevitable. You know, people walk around today sort of in denial, things that you don't want to think about, but we're all going to go through it, and we're all going to go through the transition. And it's, it's important, it's probably the most important question we ever have to ponder is where will we spend that afterlife? And so we hope that this film is an instrument for God to use to... Mm -hmm. Instill those thoughts in in the audience and and let them think on those things because it their future lies there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would just echo. I would just echo the same about love. In fact, the closing credits. Rebecca sings a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. uh, her husband Joel also produced this song, and the, and the first end credit song is much greater love. You know, greater mm -hmm. love and. Um, you know, I've come to know great love. And, and, you know, earlier in my life, I didn't know that people could love like this, but there is great love. And um, and that's what, what heals us all. You know, the Beatles said, all you need is love. And, and Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples by your love. Love never fails. And so love is what saves everybody at the end of Canaan. Land. At the end of the film, they're all at the ocean. And Rebecca calls a day of repentance, and everyone is dressed in white, representing the purity of God's great and unconditional love. And so, um, you know, remember that love is what lasts, and love is what matters, and love never fails. Mm -hmm. God's love is unconditional. We yes. humans are flawed, so we love in a flawed way. But God's mm -hmm. love, it, it is unconditional love, and He's the God of second and third and a million chances. Yes. Because it's not that much. Yes. So I, I really applaud your um, uh, effort, uh, Richard and Rebecca, in uh, trying to um, uh, reach out to the public and to uh, educate, to, to, to try to educate them uh, in, in, in what's happening in the community and how you can um, actually think for yourself and you know how people can actually be more uh, open be more loving and accept everyone uh, equally right so and not um um judge people based on uh, their beliefs and uh, their um uh, what they think and how they think right so um i think it's a it's a noble effort to uh, try to educate the public, especially with uh, your book and also the movie right now. So um, uh, I congratulate the two of you and also the uh, rest of the crew members uh, of this film. And uh, I also wish you all the best for the future undertakings. And uh, thank you actually for joining me for this um, show today. And uh, although we are having some technical difficulties, I'm so glad that uh, we are able to actually um pull through and uh rebecca i think uh, her voice is clear enough uh we uh, tried to put her on uh the speakerphone and i think uh, it worked well um uh, so thank you so much and i apologize for the uh, technical uh, difficulties that uh you know uh we're facing uh, today um nevertheless uh thank you for joining and uh, i wish you all the best and um have a pleasant um uh, week ahead richard and also rebecca well, thank you, Josvina, for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for thank you for being with us over here. Actually, meet in person. Yes. <laughs> Maybe right. we'll see you at one of the a screening of the film, Josvina. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, joining me today for the show, uh, Richard. So we will hopefully we will uh, meet again uh for um the uh subsequent uh, live events in the future so hoping to work with you again in the future and um thank you to rebecca as well so uh see you guys again soon thank you thank you richard and thank you rebecca okay god bless you bye-bye thank you bye-bye
thank you so much. Enjoy it. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.